In a 1982 issue of the International Journal of Theoretical Physics, Richard Feynman talks about how the true physical world is explained by quantum mechanics, and to imitate it, we need computers that work using the same laws. Two years after Feynman's thoughts, Bennett and Brassard proposed a way to surpass the issues that existed with conventional crypto systems by using the uncertainty principle of quantum physics. This protocol works by transmitting information encoded in non-orthogonal quantum states, and by doing so, eavesdropping will alter the information and alarm the legitimate users. In 1996, a spectacular achievement was made by Shore, who presented a quantum algorithm which factored very large prime numbers in a matter of seconds. The same procedure would take billions of years to achieve with classical algorithms. What this means is that Shor's algorithm could crack any known inscription almost in instantaneously. The unit of computation for a classical computer is called a bit, which we'll represent with this kit. This bit is able to exist exclusively in one of two states, in this case, awake or asleep. Alternatively, a quantum bit, or a qubit, is able to exist in a superposition of states, as demonstrated here by Biscuit, the sleep-running dog. However, measurement along the correct basis yields a deterministic result. But due to a phenomena called quantum entanglement, an individual qubit cannot be measured independently of the system as a whole without changing the state of the system. One method in quantum computing is quantum parallelism. Quantum parallelism is a distinct method in which a quantum computer is able to perform two computations simultaneously. This method displays a huge difference between quantum computers and classical computers. For quantum computers, a single quantum processor is able to perform multiple computations at once by utilizing quid bits, which exist simultaneously in multiple states. For classical computers, there are several processors present which are all linked together in order for parallel computing to take place processor in the classical state is able to perform one computation at once while the other processors are performing other computations. There are three common models of quantum computing, one of which is the quantum circuit model. Similar to the uh, logic gates in classical computing, quantum computers use quantum logic gates. Just how logic gates operate on bits in classical circuits, in the quantum circuit model quantum gates operate on qubits. These quantum gates are unitary matrices which perform unitary transformations, and because these transformations are one-to-one -one mappings between two Hilbert spaces, all quantum gates are reversible functions. There are classical gates like the Toffoli gates, which are reversible. The homologous Toffoli quantum gate could be mapped over the classical gate and do all the operations done by a classical circuit. In galaxy far, far away, researchers have used exciting ultra-cold rubidium gas to mediate interactions between a pair of slow-propagating photons. This newly discovered form of matter is capable of creating solid light structures. Now come, join me for lunch, and we can discuss the implications. I'll never join you! Fine, go pal around with Han Solo, and he won't be able to tell you how they plan to make a photon transistor. He told me enough! Did he tell you they have no intention of creating a lightsaber? No. No. It's not true! That's impossible! Sorry Luke, but it's true. A collaboration between MIT and Harvard did create a photon pair that interacts as if they were particles with mass. In theory, this could eventually be used to make a lightsaber, but the researchers are more concerned with the potential to make an optical deterministic quantum logic gate. Next, we have adiabatic quantum computing. This is a model that is implemented by adiabatic evolution of the system's Hamiltonian. The quantum computations are able to take place by initializing the system into the ground state of a simple Hamiltonian and then adiabatically evolving the Hamiltonian to a ground state thus encoding the solution to the problem. This type of computing does not directly manipulate particles, but rather changes the shape of the Hamiltonian. The Grover algorithm is probabilistic in which it will dispense the correct answer with a high probability. Imagine a phone directory containing n names arranged in completely random order. To find someone's phone number with a probability of 50%, any classical algorithm, whether it be deterministic or probabilistic, will need to access the database a minimum of 0.5 n times. Quantum mechanical systems can be in a superposition of states and simultaneously examine multiple names. 
By properly adjusting the phases of various operations, successful computations reinforce each other while, other, while others interfere randomly. As a result, the desired phone number can be obtained in only zero times root n accesses to the database. I have a friend who's an artist and has sometimes taken a view which I don't agree with very well. You hold up a flower and say, look how beautiful it is. And he says, you see, as I as an artist can see how beautiful this is, but you as a scientist, oh, take this all apart and it becomes a dull thing. And I think that he's kind of nutty. First of all, although I may not be quite as refined and aesthetically as he is, that I can appreciate the beauty of a flower. At the same time, I see much more about the flower than he sees. I mean, it's not just beauty at this dimension, there's also beauty at a smaller dimension. I could imagine the cells in there, also the processes, the complicated actions inside, which also have a beauty. But what Richard Feynman didn't know at the time is that plants would provide one of the first examples of quantum computation found in nature. Like a classical search algorithm, photosynthetic light harvesting complexes used to be modeled as incoming light causing an excited state that would randomly hop about until it reached the reaction center. However, research has shown that upon excitation, the energy at the surrounding complexes actually oscillates, indicating that the excitation actually causes a superposition of states that it simultaneously and reversibly reaches out and measures all possible paths and then proceeds along the most efficient one. This is analogous to a single quantum computation of the Grover algorithm and results in more energy harvested from each photon in less time. So you see... The science only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. It only adds. I don't understand how it subtracts. So I'm a, a theoretical and computational chemist. Uh, my research interests are sort of at the interface of um, theory, computation, and um, transition metal chemistry. So first, I'm not an expert on this. Um, <laughs> um, though a number of people in, in our field um, have, have contemplated what the sort of effect of an efficient or an effective uh, quantum computer could mean for us. So for five years before coming here to Merced, and I worked at Gaussian Inc., where um, they developed world's most widely used quantum chemistry packages, and so thinking about how hardware developments are going into the future is uh, sort of a paramount importance there. I think that that, um, uh, in, in many ways, would be faster, well, not in many ways, in every way, would be faster than sort of current day technology in terms of processing and, and dealing with computation. Principle, um, if someone could build a quantum computer that had the full logic capabilities that are available in a commodity computer today, it would blow open our field because uh, we'd be able to do calculations using models of the Schrodinger equation that we can't afford to do today. It wouldn't be so much that the quantum computer could do evaluations we can't do today, it would just be, it would be so much faster that what today is cost prohibitive would tomorrow just become a moderately long calculation. The problem is, is that the state of the art, as well as I, I've seen um, is a quantum computer that can factorize 15, which is, um, although an interesting thought problem, isn't yet to the level that even starts to hint at what computers were capable of decades ago. So, um, is it an interesting idea? Absolutely. If it happens, it will definitely break barriers in terms of the kinds of science that can be explored, um, not just in computational chemistry and quantum chemistry, but across this broad spectrum of scientific computing.